that uh, we introduce uh, a professor, a lady first, is uh, Ding Zhao Ti, right? It's from National Universities, uh, National Taiwan University Department of Life Science. And the other distinguished uh, speakers is Ke uh, Yi Song, it's from the uh, National Sanitation uh, University. Okay, it's just in Kaohsiung. Okay, they will give us different to uh, different topic. I wish I knew what I will be talking about. <laughs> How could the ocean be flat, right? But before I start, I have to admit that uh, I haven't been able to speak English for 28 years. So it is a challenge on you to understand me, right? So don't hesitate to raise questions if you feel you are lost. I may not be able to follow myself. Okay, let's break the, the title. The origin of the title is from The World is Fred. Okay, it's a book. If you check Wikipedia, you'll find out that it's a metaphor for viewing the world as a level playing field in terms of commerce. You can do business almost anywhere, selling your good products everywhere, and all competitors have an equal opportunity. Equal means that the opportunity is there for, for everyone, and uh, it's from Wikipedia. But the, the, on the opposite end is another term, so what I mean, what it means, Fred, is in the 21st century, right? The information can be, can be relayed everywhere very fast. Okay, but it wasn't like that. You know when, right? Okay, let's see the next. The Earth is Fred is another phrase. It's ridiculous, right? How could the Earth be Fred? And uh, actually, it is also from Wikipedia. It's a uh, modern flat earth society consists of individuals who promote the idea that the earth is flat rather than a sphere. So everybody knows it's a joke, but uh, some try to promote the idea that it wasn't. There isn't enough evidence that the earth is uh, really a globe. And as you know, that uh, in science, there is no law, right? We only falsify previous ideas which turn out to be wrong, but there is no truth in the logical sense. Only in, in scientific, in science, whatever law is something that has yet to be falsified. Okay. But uh, people who believe in the earth is flat is based on pseudoscience or on religious literalism. Literalism means that they took whatever written on the good book word by word without uh, digestion or absorption. The point is we live between them. In the same time, we get access to all the information almost immediately. At the same time, there is a threat worse people who promote wrong idea, wrong fake news, basically, knowingly or unknowingly. So in the world of internet, I argue that both are readily accessible. How do we, what do we do, right? Because we tend to believe whatever we read, but uh, be careful. There are so many things we read that is obviously incorrect, misleading, or even worse. So that, that is my basic question. What to learn in a world where all the information is actually in the internet? What, what, what should we do in, in, a, in a classroom? To teach things that's already available in the internet? Okay, but there is another phrase, and misinformation. How can you be sure that uh, a professor is more likely to be correct than the internet? Basically, what I'm challenging is it's useless to be in a classroom, right? 
the professors know only that much. 50% are wrong. The other 50% will turn out to be wrong. Well, okay, let's see. A blank. So ask a question about the oceans. I'm giving examples. You can use whatever approach, e either the flat world approach or the flat earth approach. And uh, so ask the question, then you'll know what my point is. And uh, since most people hesitate, I'll ask Marietta William. <laughs> Marietta William here, already signed in, so you must be here. <laughs> There's no denying, okay. Ask a question, Marietta. About ocean, you just put the word in a sentence, then with a question mark, it's a, it's a question. I want other people to be ready. Your opportunity arrives sooner than you think. If you don't trust me, I do have a whole A4 paper, enough for 40 names. <laughs> for example, Ria Budhathoki. Are you here? Okay, now we have two thinking minds. All others are laughing at you, right? It's their turn very soon. I want you to, to ask questions about the ocean, period. Any question you, can, you could think of, for example, you crossed oceans to be in this country, right? And the, a stupid question would be, what is the name of that ocean? Who named that, right? But uh, that's a stupid question. Do you know why? Okay, we'll, t we'll, t we'll discuss that later. How about Marietta? Uh, my how deep is the ocean? Really depends, all right? Outside of our campus, it's about two meters. But in the Mariana Trench, it's about 11,000 meters deep. This information could easily be gotten from internet. Yeah, use your, your, use your cell phone. All those questions with easy answers from Google, from internet, are what? Uh, what I define as stupid questions. Because you are wasting time in classrooms in classrooms, we are supposed to be asking much more intelligent questions, right? Intelligent question means what? The answers do not come by so easily. Need some integration, need some... Okay, great. We have a volunteer to ask questions. When will ocean disappear? Say it again. When will ocean disappear? When will the ocean disappear? Good question. Because I have no answer. <laughs> because it makes people think, right? This is a typical question that computers, internet, never ask, never answers. This makes the difference between human and, uh, and machines, right? But are there easier questions? I hope there are, right? Okay, let's see. Oh, I'm in control, right? So, actually I wasn't expecting any volunteer to ask questions. So I, will, I was uh, planning to stimulate more. Uh, and uh, my point is that uh, this is a rare opportunity. For what? For anyone to ask questions, stupid or intelligent, 
in front of so many others. That is an experience you will never get when you are on the internet, right? You can ask very rude questions without getting any response, but uh, to ask questions that make sense takes experience. Okay? All those other students who have yet to do that has to imagine the difficulty. For example, I didn't realize what he was talking about, right? Not because of his error, his mistake, it's mine. Because I'm just not used to English anymore. Okay? But still, we need to communicate. That's the bottom line, right? The bottom line is not speaking perfect Midwestern English, but to communicate with other people. Okay? Any others who want to try? to take advantage of the opportunity here and uh, so you could tell your parents that uh, I gave a public speech of 10 seconds today in front of a hundred strangers. Everybody laughed at me. <laughs> so what, right? You get the training, the experience. Okay, any volunteers? I will stop here and wait until I get the first one. I know some of you were wondering whether I should embarrass myself, right? Well, this is an opportunity that may never come by in the rest of your career on this campus. It never occurred to me, okay? Okay, great! Okay, great. I'll pretend that I understand you. <laughs> I I'm looking for an answer. The point is to speak in front of so many strangers. You have heard his question, and now I want an answer. No volunteer? You don't need to know the answer to get the opportunity. Remember that. Whatever goes through in your mind now will happen to you when the real university, real opportunity arrives. Okay? When the real opportunity rises, the only thing you should do is to grab it. Ask Professor Charles what he did when there was an announcement that the department needs a faculty member. I'll get it. I'll apply for it. Period. Whether I'm good enough is up to the decision of others, not myself. It's your attitude that counts. Okay, any volunteer to answer his question? No. Okay, you have failed to communicate. See, it's not my fault. <laughs> I don't need to know the answer of anything. Okay, raise your hand whenever you are ready. Remember you ask questions all the time in internet? When you are Google alone by yourself? Where to find the pictures of pretty girls, right? Pretty girls, you get the thousands of them. You ask questions, you get reply. How come it's difficult when there are other people around? Well, that's something we need to train ourselves off, okay? Okay, this is also another message. How do we know that the message we got, the information we get is true? from the internet. We get reply all the time, right? Some of them are true, like the world is flat. Others are like the earth is flat. Okay. This is my example. How is the sea brew? I need, definitely need answers to go on, okay? And then there is a lesson for those really, for those who reply. 
How do you think that the ocean, the sea water is blue? That's what I meant. Everybody knows sea water is blue, right? Well, I can I could give you many examples when sea water is not blue. For example, when you do agriculture, right? The pond is uh, brownish, it's green, but not blue. But uh, if you go to the sea, most of the time it is bluish. And the question is very easy. How come? How is the sea blue? Give me a keyword. When you Google in the internet, the way to find the right answer is to input a few keywords, right? For example, what I always do is pretty girls, right? <laughs> Don't laugh. You, you did the same, right? You can input girls very, 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 very pretty. Still get the same result, believe me. Okay, how is the sea blue? Say that again. Louder. Yeah. Good. What is the keyword in her reply? It's refraction, right? Okay, let's remember that. I want the second answer. That is different from refraction. Good. Depth of the ocean. So let's say depth. Okay? Great. The scattering of light. The scattering of light. Now we have three answers. The correct answer may be there, one of the three, all of the three, right? Okay, this is just an example, okay? You could uh, search yourself. I have done that for so long. I don't even know what the correct answer is. Anyone know this person? Anyone from India? Okay. If you don't know this person, maybe, maybe he is not from India, right? So who is this? Okay, Raman. So what's so special about him? Okay. According to him? So how is the sea blue according to him? Okay. If I hear you correctly, he should return the Nobel Prize. <laughs> okay. According to the story in Wikipedia, he got his uh, PhD in London and uh, have a had a cruise going back to Bombay and on the big ship a little kid asked his mother how is the sea blue which started him thinking of course it is refreshing it's in the book all other color colors have been absorbed blah 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 but he was a very well trained scientist so he later thought about this on the boat, according to Wikipedia. I got all my knowledge from Wikipedia. <laughs> and uh, when he disembarked, he did some experiments. And uh, he wrote a paper in 1930 or 1928, I think, arguing the existence of another mechanism it's called uh, Raman's scattering. Okay? Basically, it uh, says when certain factors combine together, it is possible to have a new wavelength be emitted, which is different from refraction or refraction, right? Refraction versus refraction. But it's a third kind of, of light emission. And uh, he published in, I think it's in Nature. In two years, he got the Nobel Prize 
for the discovery. Okay? Remember, he started thinking that the sea was blue because of refraction, but uh, he doubted that may not be the whole story, maybe something else. So his experiment falsified the idea of refraction. How? Well, because new wavelengths were emitted, he showed. That cannot happen under refraction or refraction. Okay. Next question. That's my question, okay? Because I always ask people to ask questions, so I have to imagine a question that uh, I didn't know the answer. So I figured this out only this morning. Has the ocean always been blue? Well, you don't need to listen to me, and I won't give you an answer, because all my answers were from internet. You could find, easily find the answer. The easy answer is no, okay? There is a good reason for that, although nobody has seen that, but uh, according to all the, all the principles, the, the, the color of the earth, of the ocean, was different. Okay, how? Oh. Who needs the ability to communicate? If you think you do, you raise your hand. Only one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, the only kind of person who don't need to communicate are, are so-called what? Zhuren. Plant people, right? They who couldn't communicate. They, we are not sure whether they listen, but uh, they don't speak a word. They don't respond to your touch, to your voice, to your whatever. They don't communicate. So basically, everyone needs to communicate. And who is born with the ability to communicate? Nobody. We were not even born to speak, right? So everything is learned. Okay? So the obvious next sentence is about what? If we are not born with the ability, obviously we need to practice, right? If you need to practice, you need somebody else. They would have to respond. No, whenever I submit my papers, they always say, I don't know what this guy is talking about. And I wonder whether the author himself knows. So I cry a lot and uh, do the writing, rewriting, and uh, more rewriting. I thought I was perfectly clear. No. If you think whatever you say in one sentence is totally clear to others, well, think again, okay? Especially in front of a hundred other people. It's not difficult. It's not easy. For example, do you know what I'm talking about up to now? Yeah? Okay, that's an improvement. Usually my students just fall asleep. Okay, the evidence of the, the ocean is flat. Let's go back to what we started. I will show you that uh, the, by, by giving examples. This is an instrument, about two meters long, about my height. What it does is it has a mechanism to regulate its buoyancy. So it could stay at about 200 meter depth, but sink to 2,000 meter and come back to the surface, during the process, using CTD, it measures conductivity, temperature, and uh, depth. Conductivity tells you the solidity of seawater, how salty the water is. Temperature, if you don't know temperature, then we are wasting our time, right? And the depth, water depth. After getting all those data, it transmitted the data through satellite to two land stations. So it's known after about a few hours. And they repeat the same process every 10 days. So we are clear what it does, right? A very simple job. 
This is how it is deployed. And let's see how the data looks like. This is the data. So the, the red line is salinity. You can see at 2,000 meter deep, the salinity is high. But then it fluctuates. Uh, maybe there is a pattern, maybe not. But the temperature is obviously colder in deep water, but, but uh, uh, higher in shallow water. This is in low latitude, near tropics. Okay, period, that's it. But that's only half of the story. This is where all these so-called Argo buoys are positioned in the world. Every three degree, there is one. It flows in the water and moves in positions. So every four to five years, one new has to be added. So, so they are scattered around the world, right? Everywhere. And uh, I downloaded this map only 27, that's four days, three days ago. Okay, and all the data are available almost instantaneously, within 24 hours. And it's freely accessible to anyone. And in their website, they also have software to teach you how to get the data. This is what I call the ocean is flat. All the information you need to know about the temperature and the salinity are there. So more than a thousand scientific papers have been published using data here. It's freely accessible. You, all you need is what? Ask questions. Okay, computers don't do that. They just store data in a systematic way. There are, there are other things. So these are some specs we may not need to know, right? Uh, basically how it operates, I, I just told you. So there are more than 3,000 circulating in the, in the world. Okay, let's not waste time here. And uh, it has lots of data. And uh, basically you could write your, your thesis based on data here. Nobody could collect more data by his own, right? Okay. The density of seawater is mostly decided by temperature and salinity. Now there is new parameter, right, that is available when you have temperature and salinity data. Let me give you an example. If you live in the tropics, your, the seawater in your country is like this. But if you live in poorer area, the temperature and the salinity is distributed like this. What's the difference? Well, let me tell you one thing. Because of the difference in temperature and the salinity, the density differs. Just let's look at the, the density here. Simply put, it means the water won't circulate because it's lighter on the surface. It's heavier on the bottom, so it will stay there for as long as you could imagine. The oxygen dissolved in surface water will not diffuse to deep waters because there is no circulation. Okay, this is totally different if we are in polar regions where there is no difference in density. Water tends to go down, period. If it gets colder, you get heavier water. This is a global thermal hairline circulation. The blue one is circulation route in very deep water. Okay, in very deep water. And here is a is a is, is a figure. So the, the green water is Antarctic bottom water because in the Antarctic surface it's uh, very cold. So they become, the density become higher, they sink to the bottom, and they circle, they circulate around the world. And the, 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 the red line indicates surface water circulation. So this is a big circulation. 
takes how long? Some estimate 1,700 years. Others say 2,000, 3,000. It doesn't really matter. It takes a long, long time. It's ancient seawater on the bottom, basically. OK. So how come we are back? OK, the other thing about uh, Argo, throat, is they are actually contributed by so many other countries, not just to the superpower. Have you seen your own flag? No? Yes, good. India, right? India contributed quite a few. Only from India? Any other country? No? What I noticed is that uh, Taiwan doesn't seem to contribute anything. Although it's possible it's listed under China, right? <laughs> That's a consolation. Okay, so this is an effort contributed by many, many countries. Here listed about uh, 30, I think. Yes. If you are rich, you contribute more. If you are not so rich, contribute. One is, uh, will get you listed. Okay, so this is what I mean, the world is flat. Even, so which is unexpected country? I don't know. Okay. So, we'll jump to another thing. To, to show you that uh, what we know on terrestrial environment differs when we talk about the marine systems. This is a primary productivity pattern on, on land. So you see green means high productivity. And, uh, and the what? This is uh, brown means uh, it's basically desert. Okay? And uh, when we were asked how about the same pattern but in marine ecosystem, uh, we have to get the answer from our experience in, on land, right? But actually, it's totally different. The blue is like desert, whereas the greenish color means high productivity. And as you can, you can see, high latitude seawater has higher productivity. Productivity means phytoplankton, plants. Single-celled organism. Five minutes. Okay. And these are deserts. Also, coastal waters are very high, very productive. Productive. Okay. What we really know is that in the terrestrial ecosystem, temperature and uh, rain precipitation includes rain and the snow will decide the productivity. In fact, if you have these two patterns, we could tell you what kind of ecosystem it is. But in the marine system, these two are no longer important. But nutrients is important. Light is important. Let's focus on nutrient only. What is the lesson learned from the previous message is that uh, we need to be careful when we infer patterns in marine ecosystem from our terrestrial based knowledge. All, most of our knowledge are first came from terrestrial system, right? Okay, now let's get at this uh, flat earth. The opposite of flat world, right? When we talk about uh, deep circulation, there is also a product called deep sea water. They claim because of the long time it takes to circulate, this deep sea water must be very clean. And uh, so they, they market the water. But the fact is that uh, they are, this water has nothing to do with, with the thermal headline circulation because they draw water from two shallow depths. But still, they are making a hell of uh, advertisements to attract uh, innocent people, just like what? The earth is flat. Okay. 
Well, I have limited time, so I have to stop here. So what I'm the message here that's summarized is what? To use the opportunity offered to you. And the second, the message is the second message is what? That in in our world, both kind of information are easily accessible. And it is up to you to decide what is fact, what is myth, right? What is the third? The, the ocean is flat. Everyone is, uh, is uh, coordinating and uh, helping each other to understand the world in a better way. And um, we couldn't really survive without others, right? Okay, thank you. <laughs>